Hey Darwin, it's Hamster. Uh, hey YouTube. I have some answers for you about the paradoxes of the double slit experiment. And I don't want to I don't want to say that this is absolute truth, but it's I think it's a much better way of understanding the situation uh, surrounding the double slit experiment and the manifestation of, of matter and the particle wave duality. And I don't really know where to start. I mean Aristotle proposed originally a luminiferous ether in which light traveled. Uh, in 1887, Michelson and Morley uh, thought up an experiment to discover the luminiferous ether. Uh, they tried the experiment looking for the movement of light um, relative to the planet Earth. In other words, they were the Earth's going around the sun, turning on its axis, supposedly. Uh, we're looking for the differential in the, the, the direction of the light and they didn't find any differential they found out that the speed of light is the speed of light no matter uh, um, which way you measure it and so they took this as to mean that there must not be an ether that that's that's at least what science took it as and Michelson and Morley weren't weren't happy with this conclusion and they read the experiment over and over and people are still doing variations of it today now you probably haven't heard of George Sagnac and the Sagnac effect uh, demonstrates this in a rotating reference frame. There's actually a difference in the speed of light in a rotating reference frame, and this has been used to produce things like uh, inertial gyroscopes that stabilize stabilize rockets and determine things that are floating in free space, what their attitude is with respect to where they came from. And so it's actually a very real thing that that there is something for matter to that propagates it, that it propagates in. But the problem with it for particle physics is if you have a particle, how does a particle move through something that's there and still remain in motion? In other words, why does why do, why is there no drag? You know, why is there no drag in the propagation? And so, you know, you've got all these issues surrounding the particle wave duality that are that are very, very kind of serious problems for science. And um, so what what I what I when I was in high school actually I came up with this in a, while I was in a physics laboratory studying waves in a, in a wave tank, and you know we were taught that space is a vacuum that it's empty, and I don't think that you, logically philosophically that makes absolutely no sense because if there were actually a place where there was nothing, in other words if there was nothingness. How could that nothingness take up any space? And so I got to thinking about this, and it made it made a certain amount of sense to me. And I I, I came up with a, a model for light, and I came up with a model for gravity. And um, I, they're not they're not perfect, but I later found out that um, in Newton's time there was a similar a similar model, and that it, it never really it never really caught on, never really got accepted. But mine's I, I think my model is much better. But the the if you really want to understand this what you have to do is understand the nature of light itself and light is very mysterious there's a there's a component to the nature of electromagnetic energy that just has not been not made its way into our modern scientific view now my indications are that this has been something that's been understood for periods of time in the past you know at, at at moments in the past, I think there's been certain people that have understood this very same principle from what, what my research. But I'll I'll tell you what I'll tell you what it is. It is not that light is a wave. It's that it is a standing wave. Now Michelson and Morley didn't have the advantage of understanding Einstein's relationship between matter and energy. They didn't realize that there was a, a sort of component relationship between matter and energy. And I think the, the solution to the understanding of these phenomenon uh, lies in the nature of that relationship. Instead of thinking of light as a wave, what if it is a standing wave that propagates between the place where it leaves and the place where it arrives? So in other words, there's a secondary wave that travels much, much faster between the place where it's emitted and the place where it arrives that creates the appearance of what we see, what we conceive as the photon so we're conceiving this thing of a photon 
and it looks like a particle, acts like a wave, and the reason is because of the nature of a standing wave. And matter, the matter, the reason that Michelson and Morley didn't detect it, the reason that it appears constant, you know, from reference frames, unless you uh, change the medium in which it's traveling, is because the matter that it would be interfering with is phase locked because it is traveling inside a common carrier wave. In other words, the matter manifests out of the same the same waveform on the what what I call you know the space particle level or um, the the, um, uh, the the level at which the the, 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 the matter is held together. Now, see, the, 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 the trick is, is that the matter is held together by these waveforms that surround it. And so that's what actually, that's the actual uh, mechanism by which it travels through time. And so our concept of time has to change, our concept of movement has to change, and the, the concept of what matter and energy really are um, it need to be rewritten. And so, if you're interested in this, um, I have a, a website that is um, <laughs> trying to articulate this, and it's at astrotometry.com, um, uh, and you can check that out and see what you think about it. Um, but to to get back to the double slit experiment, the the the, the most puzzling part of it is the, the thing with the observation, and I think the key there the key to understanding why the observation can change it is to understand that the, obser the observation mechanisms that we're using are electronic. And to create an electronic circuit and have, have something electrical near the source that is also going to be phase locked with whatever photon it is detecting is the disturbance that you see. And so in other words, that might not happen if it were possible to detect something like that without some type of electromagnetic disturbance or some type of, uh, see, see that with, with, with my model, the, the photon itself, in order to be a photon, has to set up that standing wave on the level that's underneath of it. And so there's, there's a wave underneath of it that is the actual source when you, when you turn on the light or you activate whatever source of electromagnetic radiation. Before the photon appears, there's something bouncing back and forth between where that photon is going and where it's perceived. So in a very real physical sense, where it is going has already been determined before it gets there. And so because there is this relationship between its carrier wave and its manifestation, we have things like quantum entanglement, we have spin correlation between, between photons, and there's, there's something even more amazing that falls out of this, that falls out of this situation, which is, is the very nature of our movement through time. Now, I'm not going to get into that now, but if you go to the astrotometry page, if you scroll all, make it all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see a concept called hypertime. And so if, you, if you're really interested in this and you really want to understand what's going on with consciousness and you really want to understand what's going on with perception of light, with perception in general, um, and why things are perceived the way they are, um, scroll down there and see what you think. Um, totally interested in hearing what you have to say about it and thanks a lot for posting this this is this is great this is a great uh, exposition you gave on double slit this is a very important thing in science so thanks